What's up, everybody? Hi. Welcome to another episode of After Credits. Yeah. Uh, we are here reviewing uh, the new film Boy Erased that was written and directed by Joel Edgerton. It stars Lucas Hedges, Russell Joel Crow. Edgerton, Nicole Kidman, and uh, Fat Russell Crowe. It's something about Fat Russell Crowe is like comforting. I yeah. can't imagine. Because like Fat Christian Bale is like gross. You see his gut and it's gross. Something about Fat Russell Crowe, it's like... Uh, Look, Rus Russell Crowe... Russell Crowe could be like your your, your dad. Russell you Crowe is one of my favorite actors. I don't even care. He's good. I, I, love I like Russell, Russell Crowe. I love Russell Crowe. Yeah. Okay, we got Joe Alwyn, Billy Lynn. Yes, who's also in The Favorite. We got Troy Sivan, which is the new uh, teen pop idol that everybody loves, apparently. Which and one? Then, oh, is he... Uh, he's, the kid with, he's the kid with the lip. Isn't Xavier Dolan in this movie? Xavier Dolan's in this. Who does he play? I know he's I don't, I don't know. I know who he is, but I don't know like what he looks like. I think he might have played Art Dude, but I'm not sure. And then, oh, I think of you're right. course, the one and motherfucking only, <laughs> Flea. Flea is in this movie. From the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I will say though, Flea did really fucking well. Yeah, he's scary. I really liked Flea. I mean, I always do, but I mean, as an actor, Flea's got chops, and I didn't know that. Wasn't he in Baby Driver too? Was he? I think he was. I wouldn't know. What did you think about it, quality-wise? Uh, it's fine, and it's overwrought as shit. A lot of people are calling this like a lifetime movie, and yeah, the worst parts of this get like really cheesy. This movie has pockets of like brilliance, and it's when I, Lucas Hedges is just on his own. But then, all the stuff around it, the like super slow mo and the tugging at your heartstrings music, and like the stupid little like callbacks that like end the movie, and now it's a metaphor. But it was a comedic bit. It felt like God's not dead. Wow, that was that was. It was fucking bad. What? This movie is like a really good Lifetime movie with great actors and great performances, but the story and the dialogue especially is just not there. I know who the enemy is. I know that these gay conversion therapy people are wrong. I'm not really afraid of those guys. I'm more afraid of the Nicole Kidmans and Russell Crowe's of the world. And this movie, I think, leans way too hard into that side of itself. And I understand it's the story, but I mean, in execution, it really, like, lays it on thick. And I think I wanted something with a tad more nuance with all the Oscar buzz that was being thrust about this. But when the movie's really, really good, it's really, 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 really good. So I'm really conflicted with this one. I think I definitely liked it more than you. I agree with some things you said. Specifically, the music is very, it's not even that it's just so present, it's very loud. I'm like, all right, it's, yeah. all, it's almost like the sound mix was slightly off. The music was very overwrought. I'm like, all right, we get it, it's an emotional moment. But for the most part, uh, I thought the movie was really, really strong. I thought definitely the performances, I think this is the best acting I've ever seen from Lucas Hedges. I think I'd put this up with his Manchester by the Sea performance. I get what you're saying about the lack of nuance. At the same time, I do think that it, it's sort of twofold. It's like, all right, this is something that some people may not be aware of. We're going to show it, or it's going to be depicted realistically. I think the Joel Edgerton character is not as... I didn't think he was, like, super over the top or anything. And then you have the stuff with, like, the Russell Crowe stuff and the Nicole Kidman stuff, and that's where I found that there was a little bit more nuance. Um, and there was a few scenes in particular that really impressed me, particularly his scene in the hotel with Nicole Kidman like near the very end and then the last scene with Russell Crowe which I thought was going to be done in a very different way than it was actually done and I feel like they they ended it in a way that was good because I, I agree with what you're saying this is not I mean if you're gay you know that this is wrong or whatever but this isn't really it's more meant for people who are like the Russell Crowe's and the Nicole Kidman's of the world they're like okay maybe okay maybe I'm not prepared to you know say that this is acceptable at the same time the Joel Edgerton stuff is clearly like you know that's all that's you know spoilers I'm gonna talk about some spoilers oh here my God. so if you want to know final thoughts scores out of six stars click on that time code otherwise let's get into the nitty-gritty here I loved the production design in this movie 
because it nailed so much of this side of the country down to like Nicole Kidman's like exaggerated like press her nails were like all the way out to here and that fucking like Dolly Parton wig and the way like her makeup is I loved all those little choices and designs we were kind of talking about this in the hit you give review it's like the exaggeratedly just like gray color palette like yeah there's like no color I'm like that ah, I'm okay with that mm-hmm. I don't know if that was, you know... I actually how... wasn't bothered by the color palette, but no, I think no. that was because it wasn't, like... In The Hate You Give, it was very much, like, this color palette, the yeah. next color palette. No, it was it obvious. was definitely more consistent. No, I, I, I like that, that. I like that. It was just something I noticed. No, and I love just simple things, like them driving in Arkansas, and there's, like, a church every five seconds. And fucking the ties in this movie are such an awesome thing. It cuts to Russell Crowe, and he's wearing this goofy-ass sunflower tie... And I know pastors that wear, like, ridiculous, yeah. terrible tacky ties like that. There's a part in the movie where Joel Edgerton, who's wearing, a, like, a bright-ass yellow tie, it's, like, swinging back like a pendulum, and it's a weird, like, tension motivator. I couldn't explain to you why that tie was so a, exaggerated. It's a hell of a mustache he had. It was, and like he's, he Edgerton, he looked like, he looked like, he, looked like he, he, he would be, like, he looked like he would be, like, a nice guy's villain. You know, he really kind of involved himself in the role of this main psychologist minister who's yeah. trying to convert these kids and these adults even. And that dude like commits like a motherfucker. It was on the verge of being like cartoonishly evil, almost. Yeah. Uh, it was like, and there's a few moments where it's like, uh, it, uh, you know, when he's when he's yelling at the fat kid, it's like, all right, this is almost going a no. little bit over the line. Well, I was raised in the church. Like, I, I've seen this type of shit. Yeah. And I've had, you know, pastors talk about how homosexuality is a sin in front of the entire sermon, God and the... God no. will not love you. Uh, not to that degree. See, that... that and I think that's one like, of the problems I've got it's with It's lines it. like that they are like, oh, this is a little bit like... Mm. Yeah. It didn't go like the hate you give when it's like, all right, we get it. It's like, you get it. The scene that cemented this for me, and to a point where it almost reached parody, is when they take the fat kid, they bend him over the coffin, and they start whipping him with Bibles in like this weird ass slow mo. And talking about the sound mixing, the thumps that the Bible sounds made whenever they hit him, they were kind of realistic. But the music and the everything around it was supposed to be so hyper realist, hyper accentuated. So it's like. I almost was fucking dying. It looks so ridiculous to me. See, I didn't think it was that ridiculous outside of just the music, but it's definitely an issue within yeah. the context of the story the movie is telling. It felt realistic within that context. The scene itself. Did, felt realistic. It's the just, idea of them, you know, hitting the kid, the demon out of him, I understand that. It's the way they shot it that just made me laugh. It's Joel Edgerton's scenes with the fat kid, I think underneath a lot of that is some really good commentary. Like, Joel Edgerton's obsession with the reason you're gay is because you're holding anger. I like that in addressing masculinity. Yeah. I, I thought... Some, I, of, some of the ways they're trying to address masculinity for me were, like, partially hilarious but also getting to kind of like a root of, you know, what masculinity is, how do you build it, how do you equate this, and I how think it, was, it doesn't matter. I think it was also a commentary on Russell Crowe's character, who obviously went through this, or not Russell Crowe's character, Joel Edgerton's character, yeah. who went through this program and is <laughs> some way trying to... Repress it. Yeah, and I, th- I felt like some of the subtle acting that he was doing there was really impressive. Like, uh, yeah. all the scenes where he's yelling at one of the kids, he's, in a way he's yelling at himself, yeah. and you can see why he's getting so agitated. And it totally makes sense, too, given his whole framing device would be the lie chair. Like, talk to this person here. Yeah. But really, like, he's trying to... Yeah, and there's clearly, I mean, they didn't really explore it, but I would imagine that there's some sort of relationship between with his father. That's right. why that the, the whole fatherhood thing is such a big deal. Obviously, that's trying to tie into... In the movie's trying to tie that between Lucas Hedges and Russell Crowe, but, like, for that yeah. character. I wish we would have gotten just a bit more with Joel Edgerton. Yeah, I, I, I maybe... I think that's a... I mean, I guess that... I'm assuming, at least, that as a, you know actor director he doesn't want to he doesn't want to shine the spotlight too much on himself I guess they're fucking playing baseball yeah it's no just one so ridiculous I'm just sitting here like 
No, no, just just fucking move the kid away from the better space. It was fine. It was fine. I kind of got where they were going with it, but just the image of Joel Edgerton trying to convert dudes by like having them play baseball was so like ridiculous. It did. To it me. did feel very much like. Uh, like like the team coach, like the, the the guy who works at the church who's also the the coach and shit. It very much. It, 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 felt, it looked like a weird baseball montage for like Bad News Bears. Even I, dummy who played baseball for one season, I'm looking at one of the fat kids who's just swinging. I'm like, well, well no, he just has to move in a little closer. <laughs> he he's like all the way out here. Just tell him to move in closer and swing. It's fine. I, I like the part where, uh, what's the girl's name, Sarah, when she's forced to, like, uh, rank them or whatever. That she, was an interesting... That was, that was an interesting scene. Little scene. Because it was almost like, you know, because, he, like you said, Joel Edgerton's, like, so focused on masculinity that he doesn't really care about her. Like, she's just kind no, of a no, side no. project. That's not I his thought it was. I thought it was interesting that they had both. That they had both gay and lesbian there. Yeah. And for a while, they had them intermixed, but then they kind of split the movie differently. Yeah. One of my favorite parts of this movie, and it's not because of the movie, is Flea in the bathroom. Because uh, Lucas Hedges goes to the bathroom to take a piss. Oh, I know what you're and talking about. Then, uh, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. And the then, old lady in front of us. Yes. Jesus Christ. Lucas Hedges goes to take a piss, and then Flea walks in, who's really fucking tense and scary. Like, if Flea were to molest Lucas Hedges in that scene, I wouldn't have been surprised. Yeah. But at the same time, if Flea would have just beat the shit out of him, again, I wouldn't have been surprised. He has that weird, crazy eye. Anyway, he said they're like, you know you can't take a bathroom break without one of us watching, right, boy? And so Lucas Hedges has, like, piss fright. So he's, like, peeing intermittently. And Flea says, and this is just, like, a weird line, you peeing in Morse code, boy? I almost laughed. I almost laughed, because that, just peeing in Morse code, I think it's funny. And he called him a faggot. And then the lady in <laughs> front of us just audibly, <gasps> I was like, oh, God. Did you not That's see... That's what this type of movie is, No, no, it? no, that was just, like, fuck her, because it's like, oh, you were shocked by that, but the scene where, like, Joe Alwyn, like, rapes Lucas Hedges, you're not a... That doesn't scare you, but, like, I the fact... I think she was a little too stunned for words. The intro with Joe Alwyn, like, you see Lucas Hedges take some wandering looks, but it never, like, shows you, like... Yeah. It never does an insert shot of the dude's dick. And so when Joe Alwyn just straight up, like, in a wide shot... And it doesn't break away for yeah, a long time. When he good. fucking rapes him, I'm just like, holy shit. Yeah, that was very that was very effective. The, the, just the continuous wide shot. Yeah. And then as you slowly realize it's gonna happen, it's like, oh fuck. I was just like, oh fuck, oh, oh, fuck. Yeah, that was it was very disturbing. That, that was when I was thinking, okay, this movie's got balls. Like, this movie isn't, you know, just cutting away or dancing around the topic. Like, it's right there in fucking center. Joel Edgerton is trying to tailor everybody to fit his experience, and Lucas Hedge is like, no, I am not just yeah, I don't gay. Hate, I don't hate my father. Like, he's just refuting everything. He's like, no, you're not looking at me as me. Yeah. Like, nothing happened. And, of course, he's not ready to confess that someone raped him. Yeah, and he doesn't... I like that he doesn't confess that to his parents, either. Well, no. He's, he's just... He wants to avoid that altogether. Last week, we watched Wildlife, and that character kept a lot in... And I like that this movie didn't follow that exact same route and let Lucas Hedges just unleash at one point. Yeah. Or a couple points in this movie, he just lets go and cries because yeah. he has to. And I thought the climax of this movie was really weird, too. Which one? Because I don't know why I felt... I think I expected somebody to beat the shit out of Lucas Hedges, but the way they're trying to very gingerly avoid like a lawsuit or getting shut down... It, Joel Edgerton has an agenda that's above this kid. He wants to contain this as much as possible. Yeah. And so he's not going to, like, have somebody harm the kid physically. Yeah. But you also see, like, the personal intent. You know, once yes. he gets... Once he starts to relate himself to Lucas Hedges, he yeah. becomes so convinced of it that it is more than one person, but it, it's, you know... Right. Do you want to talk about Nicole Kidman and Russell Crowe? I do, actually. I thought the last... The, the, the scene with Russell... Or with uh, Nicole Kidman at the... Whatever, like, the, uh, I guess it was still... They were still in the hotel. When she's like, your father doesn't want you to come home, but, you know... And I do. Say, yeah, and, like, that whole conversation, she's like, I've been sidelined by him. I was like, oh, this is a good way to fit in what their family culture is like and, you know, her role in all of this. That part was problematic to me because it was very much, like... She was saying the right things, but she wasn't saying, like, I love you, you are my son, I would, 
I, I, I don't know what it was. I think she was just like dancing around like, I just let it happen. I have a chance to be different now. Maybe it's because the character wasn't fully ready to open up that's, and like, that's, deal with that shit, but to me, I guess as I, part of the movie, it just... Your, your, I guess your complaints with like the whole thing dancing around, that felt like in character for them, for me at least. I like I didn't have a problem with that. That felt like something that like a, somebody like Nicole Kidman in that situation would say. Like she doesn't want to, like, like you're gay and I accept you and let's, uh, let's go to Disney World. No, uh, that's not what I'm like, saying like, at all. I'm saying like really just accept the fact that you fucking like sent your son to be tortured and abused. Yeah, but at the same time, I don't think that I don't shit. think Nicole Kidman would say that. Like her character, it didn't feel realistic for her character to like. She wasn't ready to say that at that moment. And maybe they could have included another scene when she does sort of open up more. But like for that scene, it, uh, I mean, I like the scene afterwards where she's kind of subdued when she's talking about her marital problems with. Um, yeah. Russell no, that, all that stuff was not good. work. And then Russell Crowe, I think, was pitch perfect the entire movie. Yeah. <laughs> He's no so out what. of character as an asshole. <laughs> Russell Crowe wouldn't like beat his kid. Yeah. But it's not about the beating, it's about just the there's like always this look of shame that he has towards him and yeah. like insecurity and really just not wanting to get into it because he really, really feels conflicted. And I loved that conflict. It felt yeah. real. I felt like obviously there's the ending scene, but the the scene where after uh the, they get the, the police come over and they're like oh yeah that one kid killed himself there's like just this when Lucas Hedges goes upstairs and Russell Crowe's like watching him you can see in that character's eyes oh shit this could have happened to my kid and like that and that's that's when sort of the fatherhood takes over then from any of like the priest shit you know what would have made that scene work for me silence that music kicked in yes. and that slow-mo kicked in and I was like fuck you Talking about final thoughts, scores of six stars for Boy Raced. I'm going three out of six. Because it's a fine movie and it's got like damn good parts in it. It's just so overwrought and I it's not for me. But I do see the value in people, you know, people who are conflicted, maybe people who want like a first step into dealing and having these conversations, this is a worthwhile movie for you guys to check out. I think this would be way more effective if just the score was not so present and if they let it have some silence. Just the score and the slow-mo, that's what really made this more lifetime-y, where at the heart of it, I don't think it's a very... I, I think that they dealt with this with um, the appropriate amount of nuance and the appropriate amount of, like, this is a point where we should have a more subtle conversation, and this is a point where it's like, okay, clearly this is wrong, and we're going to show this in its entirety. I think Lucas Hedges uh, is great. I think Russell Crowe and uh, Nicole Kidman are both really great. I'm going to go five out of six. The, the score really does bother me, and that was, like, there was a point where, like, I really should drop this to four and a half. But at the end of the day, I was like emotionally impacted by the movie, and I think that has value. So I'll go five out of six. Thank you very much. If you stuck till the end, let us know what you thought about the movie. If you've seen it below, then you know, like, subscribe. We got Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I got a Twitter at Royal Screwups. I have a blog, leandogahan.wordpress.com. I do movie reviews, written movie reviews. I see a ton of movies, a lot of indie movies that not enough people see. You've been doing it for about five years, so. Oh, check yeah. all those out. I do have an actual interest in checking out Robin Hood. Because you all okay, really want to see Robin Hood. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, we did the prediction video, so That's we true. gotta find out how accurate we were on I do this hope shit. that that chandelier thing happens. I hope that chandelier happened thing. I hope Benny and the Jets fucking happens. <laughs> but yeah, until next time we talk to you, thank you all very much again for watching, and we'll see you later. Mazel tov! Thank you.